Hey guys, it's 123Toy back again with a new video. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to build a brand new subwoofer that I recently designed that was based off of this subwoofer. This is the Voxel subwoofer that Paul Carmody originally designed back in 2013. Now guys, I want to make sure that Paul Carmody gets the recognition here. Paul Carmody did design this particular subwoofer enclosure back in 2013, which has an F3 of 35 hertz and it's only nine and a half by 12 inches by six inches. It is a great little subwoofer. Now I wanted to design something a little bit different, but around that same subwoofer that he used. So let's take a look at the subwoofer that he used, and then I'll talk about why I wanted to design something just a little bit differently than what he designed. Now you'll take a look at this. This is the Tang Band W5 1138 SMF. I gotta say, when you pick this thing up, this is not what you expect from a five and a quarter inch subwoofer. I mean, this is truly a subwoofer. I mean, look at the surround on that thing. It is just a little powerhouse. It is unbelievable how much power this five and a quarter inch driver has. It, and this is a subwoofer, guys. This is not a mid range. This is not. A, this is truly a subwoofer. Now, some of you guys might think that it's uh, fairly expensive for that price. I, I gotta say, it's it's really not. The output that this has. And the size box that it can be in for that output is just phenomenal. Now, part of the reason why you get such good output from this driver is its power handling. It can do 40 watts continuous power handling and 80 watts total max. Now, you also get a really large amount of excursion, and you could just tell by looking at it. But you do get 9.25 millimeters of excursion. That just means it's going to be able to push a lot of air for a driver of this size. So let's go ahead and show you what it was originally designed around, which was this amplifier. This is the LP168HA amplifier, which is capable of quite a bit of wattage. The issue with this particular amplifier is, at least at the time that it came out, it came with a 12 volt 3 amp power supply. Now that's only about 36 watts. So that means that you're getting between 10 to 15 watts probably to the subwoofer and that's about it. So I wanted to design a subwoofer enclosure that could hopefully handle closer to the 40 to 80 watts handling without us really having to be concerned about any type of port chuffing or port noise. Just something that you could put up and, and hopefully not have to be concerned with. Now, the only way that I could do that is by creating a slot port. So this is designed for higher wattage amplifiers. So for those of you who want to get and put 40 to 60 watts on this, this is really where this particular box comes in. Now, this box is not that much bigger than what Paul Carmody originally designed, which is really nice because it's going to be able to fit in anyone's living room or desktop setup really easily. This is only 11 and a half inches wide by 11 and a half inches by six inches. Now, you're only going to see five inches here because right now all I'm doing is showing you the internal measurements. So if you decided to cut things, uh, cut this yourself, you're going to be using half inch stock. You're going to cut two 11 and a half inch by 11 and a half inch squares. And really, however you want to cut these others are really up to you. But uh, I'll show you one of the ways you cut. You could cut one of them that's 11 and a half by five, one that's 10 and a quarter by five. This one would be 11 inches by five, and finally 10 and a half inches by five. So that would be all your cuts minus the slot port. The slot port is using quarter inch material, so you do have to pick up some quarter inch material as well. Now this quarter inch material, you'll need one cut five inches by nine and a half, and one that's a five inch by six inch. Now that gives you a total port length of 17 inches. Now I know some of you guys are probably thinking, wait, that's only 15 and a half inches. It's not, it's 17. And if you're not sure why that is, check this video out here. It's gonna tell you how to measure port length. I think it's really important that anyone that's going to be designing subwoofers or speakers knows how to measure this properly because it does throw you off and you can really get thrown off of tuning if you mess that up. All right, guys. Now, there's a couple things that I wanted to think of when I designed this. 
And I want to go over that, and then I'm going to tell you what the final tuning frequency is and what the theoretical F3 of this particular driver in this enclosure should be. Now, I wanted to put it where you could put the subwoofer directly in the center. And so I wanted to make the center of the speaker as clear as possible from any obstructions, and I did do that. Now, I also wanted to make sure that the port could be three-quarter inches wide. One, because, of course, that cuts down on... Uh, the amount of port velocity and two you're going to be having half inch and probably one quarter inch scraps lying around and because of that you can throw some scraps inside here for those of you who don't have a lot of tools um, really I want to make sure this is as easy as possible for anyone to build and I really believe that anyone could build this you don't need to have a ton of tools but you could just take some scraps of half inch and one quarter inch, slide them in here while it's being glued together. That way you can keep your port at the right size while it's being glued together. And then just remove them after it's been glued together. Don't glue those in place, obviously. So that'll give you the proper spacing without having to need any other tools. Now, the other thing that's cool about this, too, is once you put the two sides on, you glue the two sides on, you also don't need to cut any of the slot port out. The slot port is already cut for you by just using the sides of the box. Now, I did make this the rear of the box, and because this is the rear of the box, really, you could make anything the rear of the box, but I like this to be the rear of the box because you have plenty of space to be able to put an amplifier. I wanted to make sure that this port wasn't going to get in the way of any type of amplifier or anything else you're going to be putting in or on the box. So let's talk about some of the orientations that you can build it. This is one of the orientations you can build it. Now, I would typically have the sub firing downward and having some type of feet on it, but this just shows you that you could put it like underneath a chair. You could put it um, underneath like a TV stand or something of that nature, or maybe even underneath a shelf on a desk, and it should be able to fit fairly easily and you shouldn't have to worry about any, taking up any space. Now, I would make it down firing. That way, no one touches the subwoofer while it's firing. Uh, if you have cats, dogs, whatever, that will also protect the subwoofer from it. Uh, and, and then, of course, you can just put your amplifier back here, and you have plenty of room to put whatever size amplifier that you want. Now, you have the other orientation, which is going to be good for behind a couch or maybe beside a TV stand or beside a desk. And this is what a lot of people will probably design and build this around. Now, this particular sub, uh, I wanted to make sure that you realize that the new Lapai LP210PA that I just recently reviewed could fit easily on the back. Now, the reason why that's really cool is this is a new plate amplifier that's a 2.1 amplifier. So it could power the subwoofer and then, of course, two satellites. So if you want like a small bedroom system or even if you wanted to build a sound bar and use this as the basis of the amplification for it, you could do that. Um, and then of course you have your input and your power here. Now I had said that I like to have the port up high and the reason why, or one of the reasons why, is because once you plug in your power and your cables and your speaker wires, hopefully those are going to be routed down and over and those will not get in the way of the port. However, if you had your port on the bottom and you've routed those down, those are going to be directly uh, next to the port, which I, I don't personally like to have. Uh, of course, you can design these any way you want. So if you put this, you know, down on the ground or, or somewhere to look nice, you could, of course, put some wood inlays or make it look like a piece of furniture. No one would have to know that it's a subwoofer, right? And that's one of the reasons why it's kind of cool to be able to put it upside down if you want to somewhere. You know, put like a nice cherry inlay like I did in this voxel sub that I built up here. This was actually the Paul Carmody voxel sub that I built up here. So um, now I did build this particular subwoofer and I did test it out. And I got to say that it was phenomenal. I actually had it in my living room and uh, I have a fairly, I mean, I, I have a like a normal size living room, I would say. I, I don't know the exact dimensions, but I have a fairly normal size living room. And I had this in here, and I got to say, I was very impressed with it. I did use um, this amplifier that I got from Amazon. It was a just a 50 watt amplifier that was a, a subwoofer amplifier. I'll put a link in the description down to it if you're interested in using something like that. I used a 19 volt by 4.8 power supply to power it, 
And I was very, very happy with that. Now I, I ran it just with that sound bar that I had designed and, and built. And, uh, it was very, very powerful. I was really impressed with it. Now, the tuning frequency came out to be a little bit higher than Paul Carmody's. Paul Carmody's original one was probably around 40 to 41 hertz, and this is closer to 42 to 43 hertz. So its theoretical F3 is between 37 and 38 hertz. It's not going to be necessarily the theoretical 35. So you're going to be theoretically losing out on 2 to 3 decibels, although once we calculate uh, room game and really honestly – two to three hertz really is not going to be anything that you're really going to be missing in like a normal size room with this particular subwoofer. I mean, I, I don't think anyone here would be missing those two to three hertz. Now, if you want to get a theoretical response from WinISD, this is the theoretical response. Uh, it is It does go up just a little and then curves down, and it, you see the F3 is about mm, 37 and a half hertz or so. All right, guys. Now, I do believe that anyone could build this, and I would highly encourage you, if you're in the market for like a small subwoofer like this, to, to give this a try. I think you would be very, very happy with it. Now, if you don't want to build the slot port, just go build Paul Carmody's if, if you want to. Um, although, I, I like I said, I really like this design. I think it turned out really well, and I didn't get any port noise, even with the amplifier that I was using, so I was very, very happy with it. All right, guys, if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, please leave them in the description below. I try to respond to those when I can. And, uh, guys, I really appreciate you watching these. If you enjoyed this video, as always, give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. And don't forget to check out some of my affiliate links or some of the other things in the description if you want to connect with me, including Instagram. All right, guys, have a great night, and I will see you soon.